Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 underrated Eminem songs. For this list, we'll be looking at the most underappreciated tunes released by Eminem. What do you think of Eminem's body of work? Let us know in the comments. Hey Mojoholics! For a chance to win cash prizes, play our live daily trivia challenges every day at 3 p.m. and 8 p.m. Eastern only at watchmojo.com slash play. Number 20. Bad Guy Bad Guy opens the Marshall Mathers LP2, a sequel to M's legendary sophomore release. Go about your life like it was nothing. You ruined mine, but you seem to be doing fine. Well, I'd never recover. It's a perfect introduction to the album, with Eminem shedding the more sincere music he embodied on recovery to present a brutal story of revenge. Feelings I harbor, all this pent up resentment I hold on to, not once you call to ask me how I'm doing. Bad Guy is meant to bridge the gap between the two albums by serving as a continuation of his famous song, Stan. During the song, Eminem embodies Stan's now-grown and vengeful brother, Matthew. I'm the bad guy who makes fun of people that die. And hey, here's a sequel to my Mathers LP just to try to get people to buy. The fourth verse also goes hard with vicious strings. We also get Eminem reflecting on his inability to step down. It's a wonderful one-two punch, a storytelling tour de force, and a thoughtful introspection on fame, celebrity, and artistic integrity. I'm the nightmare you fell asleep and then woke up still in. I'm your karma closing in with each stroke of a pin. Number 19. Big Weenie At the time, Encore was widely criticized for its comedic music, especially coming after the more introspective Eminem show. We don't think any song embodies encore and its goofy style quite like Big Weenie. You're just jealous of me cause you, you just can't do what I do, so instead of just admitting it, you walk around and say all kinds of really mean things. Eminem has reflected on Big Weenie, saying that it was written in about 25 minutes when he was struggling with substance use disorder. While the resulting song isn't what you'd expect from him, it's undeniably entertaining. The song has a great driving beat and some acidic lyrics aimed towards the source owner, Ray Benzino. Marshall, I'm so jealous of you. Please say you won't tell nobody. I'd be so embarrassed. I'm just absolutely terrified. It also has some killer lines showcasing M's talent for rhyming. Like, what do you munch a bunch of crunch and munch? But a chorus where he speaks the lyrics in a staccato style stands out the most. You just look like an idiot when you say these mean things cause it's so easy to see you're really just a big weenie. Number 18. Rhyme or Reason We return to the Marshall Mathers LP2 for Rhyme or Reason, which sees Eminem changing direction from the original album. Ever since I drove a 79 Lincoln with white balls, had a fire in my heart. The first Marshall Mathers LP contains many vitriolic lyrics aimed towards Eminem's mother, but Rhyme or Reason sees him targeting the other parent. Let's have us a father and son talk! But I bet we wouldn't probably get one block without me knocking your block off. Eminem has openly expressed contempt for his absentee father in previous songs, and Rhyme or Reason tackles the subject head on. Rick Rubin showcases his stellar talent for production, integrating the zombie's time of the season into the beat and lyrical storytelling. There's no rhyme or no reason for nothing. Plus, any song that has Eminem rapping in a Yoda voice is a winner in our books. But wait for the game, your enthusiasm it has them. Follow you must, remove my little pad to one. Number 17, 8 Mile. When 8 Mile was released at the height of Eminem's fame, Shady Records also released a companion album that contains a number of great songs from Eminem himself. One of them is the six minute epic 8 Mile. Sometimes I just feel like quitting, I still might. Why do I put up this fight? Why do I the song contains a bouncy piano beat produced by Luis Resto and Eminem himself. While listening, you can note that the rapper rides the track effortlessly with a catchy flow. The lyrics also reflect the theme of the movie. Eminem embodies a poor, downtrodden, but ultimately ambitious man from the slums of Detroit. Not a moment goes by that I'm afraid of the sky. Please, I'm begging you, God. Please don't let me be fishing, holding a regular job. It'll make your head bob. It'll be stuck in your head for days. And it'll make you want to get up and do something. What more can you ask for? And it's cold, trying to travel this road. Plus, I feel like I'm all stuck in this battling mode. Number 16. Brain Damage 
Eminem's first album was unlike anything we had heard before, with the rapper introducing us to his cutting and unapologetic alter ego, Slim Shady. While the album is famous for its transgressive lyrics, it's not often that Eminem gets personal. One day just like that, I decided to strike back and flatten every tire on the bike rack. But Brain Damage proves to be an exception. In this song, Eminem raps about his childhood and how he became a victim of frequent torment. While he tells the tale through his slim, shady persona, the story contains many autobiographical elements that Eminem would reflect on in later songs. I tried to plead and tell him we shouldn't be, but he just wouldn't leave. He kept choking me and I couldn't breathe. It still contains some of the album's caustic humor. However, the more personal angle helps the song stand out from the pack. Number 15, Amityville. Eminem is known for his masterful lyrics and talent for storytelling, but if there's one aspect of his music that is supremely underrated, it's the atmosphere that his music generates. Amityville was co-produced by Eminem himself and ranks highly as one of his most unique sounding tracks. It's a creepy song complete with eerie whispering, harsh musical tones, and Eminem screeching angrily over the chorus. It's another examination of the harsh realities of Detroit. The city's violence is compared to the demonic and otherworldly encounters seen in the Amityville horror. Eminem portrays his home city as almost biblically evil, and the accompanying music helps build a suitably horrific atmosphere. That's the mentality here. That's the reality here. Did I just hear somebody say they want to challenge me here? Huh? Number 14, Evil Twin. If Eminem were to end his career with the Marshall Mathers LP2, we would have been happy. In fact, Evil Twin seems like an introspective summation of his career, beliefs, and public persona. No more in sync. Now I'm all out of whack. I'm all out of Backstreet Boys to call out an attack. It serves wonderfully as a climax to his musical arc. Eminem throws a dense rap over a heavy and cold synth beat, expounding on his complex personality and questionable morals. <laughs> Hogger of beats, hoarder of rhymes, borderline genius who's bored of his lines. He declares that there is no evil twin. In fact, his aggressive and belligerent Slim Shady persona is really just another aspect of himself. It's a very challenging thing to accept, and arguably even harder for Eminem to admit. But no one said that art was easy. Don't try to fix me, I'm broke, so I don't work. So are you, but you're broke, cause you don't work. Number 13, Soldier. As the title suggests, Eminem produced much of the Eminem show himself, including the seventh track, Soldier. The music contains a repeating keyboard motif and a light drum beat. The track is just one part of a larger, overarching story within the album, nestled between companions The Kiss and Say Goodbye to Hollywood. Eminem reflects on how the public perceives him as a violent and antagonistic figure. Everybody holds and stops and calls the cops. All you see is bitches coming out there all the time. He also argues that this perception is far from the truth. Like many songs on the Eminem show, he opens himself up and reveals that most of it is just an act that he was forced to embody for survival, both on the streets and in the music industry. And Lord have mercy on any more of these rappers that burst me and put a curse on authorities in the face of adversity, I'm a soldier. Number 12, Bitch Please 2. We don't care how many he does, there will never be a greater Eminem collaboration than Bitch Please 2. This song contains a who's who of late 90s and early 2000s rappers, including Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, Exhibit, and Nate Dogg. I just want you all to notice me and people to see that somewhere deep down is a decent human being in me. It's an all-star lineup where everyone brings their A-game. Dre provides a typically stellar beat reminiscent of West Coast hip hop and even raps on the first verse. You and what army could harm me, DRE and Shady with Doggy from Long Beach. Snoop Dogg provides an effortlessly smooth second verse, while Nate Dogg proves richly melodic on the chorus. Exhibit goes hard on the third verse. Gotta love it cause I exposed the facade. Your little lungs is too small to hot box with God. And Eminem comes in on the fourth with some fantastically dense rhyming that proves some of the best of his career. What if he's right? I'm just a criminal, making a living off of the world's misery. What in the world gives me the right to say what I like? Number 11, White America. 
As the title suggests, the song explores Eminem's race and how it impacts his place in the hip-hop industry. He also tackles how he managed to accrue so many listeners not usually accustomed to rap music. I never would have dreamed in a million years I'd see so many people who feel like me. This journey put an incredible amount of stress on the rapper. After working for a while, he lets it loose in this seriously underrated track. I would catapult to the forefront of rap like this. How could I predict my words? Eminem even raps the lyrics in a slow and methodical manner, with each word clearly enunciated to get the message across. If you want a snapshot into his early career, his impact on the wider pop cultural landscape, and the brewing angst of an unheard generation, there's no better song than White America. Number 10. Business the Eminem show saw Eminem at the height of his commercial prowess, aided by hit singles like Without Me, Cleaning Out My Closet, and Sing For The Moment. Business, however, barely made a dent in the Billboard charts. That said, it did reach number 6 in the UK, a fair sight better than in the US. Business is arguably one of Eminem's most fun songs, mostly due to Dre's infectious and poppy beat. Eminem also does what Eminem does best, flowing about being the best while dropping some insanely funny and clever lines along the way. It's the most amusing Eminem song you've never heard. Number 9. Still Don't Give a Fuck. Still Don't Give a Fuck perfectly encapsulates everything that makes Eminem both so great and so controversial. M goes all out on this song, including encouraging his own drug use and offensive personality, and spouting some of the most insanely violent lyrics of his career. If that's not all, he also shows us why he's considered a master lyricist with lines like I get a master tip with a mouth full of adjectives, a brain full of adverbs, and a box full of laxatives. Still don't give a f showed the world just who Eminem was, and a lot of people didn't like it. Number 8. Off the Wall featuring Redman. You won't find Off the Wall on any of Eminem's studio releases, nor Redman's. Nope, you'll find it on the Nutty Professor 2 The Clump soundtrack. Hardcore. For Off the Wall, Eminem teams up with Redman, and the two make for a fantastic duo. While Redman is certainly great, it's Eminem who shines on the track, again mostly due to his signature flow and stellar lyrics. He also hits on many of his classic subjects, including his mother, his wife Kim, and Britney Spears and Christina Aguilera. The beat may be a little strange, but Eminem kills it regardless. Number 7. Criminal While Criminal is adored by hardcore Eminem fans, many casual listeners have never heard it, and that's a damn shame. Here we see Eminem being controversial just to be controversial, like the constant references to violence, anatomy, and many pejorative remarks. However, it's not the controversy that makes this song so good, but the technical prowess at hand. The beat is amazing, and Eminem spouts some of the greatest lines of his career. His flow immediately following the skit is particularly fantastic, and arguably the greatest of his entire discography. So many lyricists would kill to have a fraction of this man's talent. Number 6. Rabbit Run Okay, we know we just said that Criminal is one of Eminem's technical masterpieces, but Rabbit Run has to be up there as well. I'm about to kill it, I can feel it building up. Cloud is building up, I've been sealed enough. My cup runneth over, I done filled it up. Rabbit Run was the closing track to the 8 Mile soundtrack, meaning few have actually heard it. It may be overlooked, but it's one of Eminem's most impressive pieces. Not only does it feature some killer rhymes and lines, but the song doesn't have a chorus or a bridge. It's simply one long continuous three minute flow from M. It 
it's on this song that Eminem proves he's not only a lyrical genius, but a rapping god as well. Number 5. Infinite Infinite is one of Eminem's earliest works, yet it still holds up to this day despite how far he's come, both in terms of writing ability and production quality. With this index and check the monologue. Turn your system up, twist them up and indulge in the marijuana smoke. The title track of his debut studio album, it may lack an Eminem's later personality and charm, but it still highlights an extremely talented rapper on the cusp of immense success. I came to cause some pandemonium, battle a band of phony MCs, a stand lonely one. Eminem's lyrical abilities are instantly notable, as this entire song serves as a showcase for his insane rhyming abilities. As he says in the song, my rhyming skills got you climbing hills. He's not wrong. Number 4. Rock Bottom The Slim Shady LP seemed to be made to stir controversy and get Eminem's name in the headlines. And while it certainly did that, it still contained a few nuggets of personality. Rock Bottom is one of the few personal songs on the record, and it gave the album some much needed humanity. The song was written right after Eminem was fired from his day job and had $40 for his daughter's Christmas present, and his pain regarding poverty and parenthood are clearly and emotionally expressed in the song. People that hate me, but it's the evil that made me the stack stab and the seeful and shady. I want the money, the women, the fortune and fame. While M would master his more morose subject matter in subsequent albums, this was a great start. Number 3. No Apologies no Apologies appeared on Shady Records' Eminem Presents The Re-Up, a compilation album starring artists signed to Eminem's label. Of course, Eminem had to make a cameo appearance, and as usual, he absolutely slays. And while the song contains the usual brilliant lyrics, it also has a fantastic beat and stellar production, courtesy of Luis Resto and Eminem himself. The chorus is full of haunting strings, resonating bells, and pained vocals similar to The Way I Am, and the entire third verse shows Eminem perhaps at his most vulnerable and open. It's a highly emotional song that doesn't get the respect it deserves. Number 2. 25 to Life Recovery is often placed near the bottom of Eminem's discography, but it still features some undeniably great songs, chief among them being 25 to Life. So you better hear me out this much you owe me. I gave up my life for you, totally devoted to you, I've stayed. The track's chorus departs from Eminem's previous style, but the story and the message really make an impact. It's told like a typical spiteful breakup song, but we learn at the end that Eminem is talking about hip hop, not a person. Why I'm married to you still, man, I don't know. But tonight I'm serving you with papers, I'm divorcing you. Go marry someone else and make them famous. And while M didn't divorce hip hop like he said he would at the end of the song, we nevertheless feel his pain when it comes to a strained relationship with fame, success, and respect. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Love Game, featuring Kendrick Lamar Any track with Kendrick Lamar is worth a listen. For Love Game, Lamar partners with M and drops his more academic, political, and socioeconomic edge to deliver a hilarious song about difficult girlfriends. Used to be my fiance, so you sucked on Wayne, Andre, and Kanye. Of course, it could be read as an extended metaphor about their troubled connections to the music industry, but funny sex song is more fun. Cut me deep as Syria, you know I want you bad as a Benjamin. I'm delirious, I want you bad as the head shattered on George Zimmerman. To go with the brilliantly funny lyrics is a truly unique beat and unconventional flow from both M and Lamar, showcasing their respective technical abilities. She doesn't love. Me. No, she don't love, me no more. love Game has a little bit of everything, and it's easily one of Eminem's most unique tracks. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.